Welcome to Neurotic News, episode whatever it is. Um, we uh, have a live show, our first ever live recording of this podcast. I don't think it's on sale yet, but it will be very shortly. That'll be on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and website. There'll be links to that. That's on the 16th of March at Good Chat Comedy Club underneath Fritzenberger. So that'll be good. I've got a work in progress for my new, new stand-up hour at Good Chat on the 11th of March, actually, now. That is on sale. So get on that. Uh, that just went on sale. And we're both doing Melbourne, aren't we, Rathy? Yeah, yeah. We go God both going to be. God damn. We're both going to be in Melbourne doing our solo shows. So there's plenty of stand-up to be seen between Brisbane and Melbourne of us. So get involved. Um, yeah, so... You know what I was thinking about the idea of utopia, as you do when you when you're depressed. You tend you tend to think of utopia more. You think um, of a lot of things. <laughs> All yeah, sorts right. of things. Yeah, a lot of things run through the old mind at midnight. Um, <laughs> and I was thinking, like, at the end goal, you think of the end goal of technology is to have us genetically modified, so we're perfectly physically and mentally happy all the time right like why would yeah. you choose to not experience anything negative and to look great that's what you'd choose right if you could choose your genetics wouldn't you yeah you you'd try and not be a fuck up yeah you wouldn't program in being an ugly fat fuck who's who's constantly jealous of everyone <laughs> i mean maybe for a day that could be fun well, that's what I'm saying is I think that like if you program to yourself to be perfectly happy all the time, you would live in a society where people would take drugs to make themselves feel negative emotions for fun. Like we take ecstasy oh. now in a society where everyone's programmed to have no negative emotions. People would take jealousy and like greed yeah. and take like anxieties like, dude, I double dropped anxiety. I couldn't sleep for three nights thinking about some shit I said in preschool. Like you would want the negative. Yeah, you 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 might just want it because of the novelty, or also just the intensity of the those emotions that aren't just when everything's going well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, is it just like the idea that we can't sustain? We we want to feel what we're not allowed to, or something. Yeah, I think. Um, like you're not also, allowed to feel these emotions. So the human part of you wants you to go, fuck, I wonder what it feels like to feel jealous. Yeah. There's a part of that. And there's also like a weird morbid fascination where you do, there's a, there's a weird enjoyment to it. There's a perverse enjoyment to the negative shit. There's a, there's a weird enjoyment to anxiety. There's a weird enjoyment to depression. Like these weird, these negative emotions have these weird, like sometimes you can be so depressed that it's sort of like it's fascinating to yourself. <laughs> sometimes I'm Do so depressed. It's fascinating. <laughs> well, you just like, you just like, like I've been that way. You're just like, Holy fuck. I'm so depressed. This is, this is really quite interesting. <laughs> uh, this is, this is heavier than it's ever been. I know what you mean though, because it's like you get to a certain physical state even even with sickness, it's like that feeling when you're sick and you sweat, you, and you 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 sweat your way out of it. Like your body burns yeah. the virus literally out of your system. <laughs> and there's something fe that feels great about that, where you're like, yeah. you know, where you're like, ah, oh, I've been euphoric after fevers, but like then weirdly enjoyed the the sweat, like the sweating and the there's something we, like the shivering and stuff. Like there's this weird thing where you're kind of enjoying the, the pain of it all. Like it's yeah. not a very big part of you that enjoys it, but it's just a weird, like, Whoa, this is, this is something. There's some part of you that enjoys suffering basically. Yeah. Only a little bit though. Not too much. No. Yeah. Like totally. my, my, you'd microdose jealousy or you'd microdose. In this utopian, <laughs> like you yeah, do yeah. five milligrams of jealousy, like the yeah. So you're just like, that's a nice shirt. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ambiguous sort of, not like waiting in the bushes with a knife to kill someone because they got promoted at their job in Aldi. Yeah, not, not that, Saudi that, style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Saudi style. Like, yeah, not like you've got like a, yeah, like, you, yeah, you're going to, yeah, totally. You just want that little bit of like, oh, you think you're better than me? I'm going to subtly undermine you. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, yeah. Passive aggressive. <laughs> So in this utopian future, people like in the future that we're heading towards where everyone is, is, is going to have access to such great health care for mental and physical health that um, people will look younger, they'll stay younger, they'll feel great all the time. I reckon it will become like a inner city wealthy thing to do, which is actually <clears throat> be a tourist to suffering. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's like in the same way that the richest people in the world don't have social media or like right. don't have like a phone or whatever, you know, like Warren Buffett or whatever will just have a flip phone. Right. Yeah. Like he wants to be a tourist in the world of before tech. Yeah. Right. All those Silicon Valley people don't send their kids to like they send their kids to Montessori schools because right. they know that the tech utopia is all bullshit. Like fucking right. Elon Musk kids wouldn't have even seen an, an iPhone or whatever. Elon Musk has his own school that his kids go to. He made it. Oh, really? Yeah. He runs his own school. Yeah. And I doubt that they, they have like, I don't even, well, I don't know what his, but like other, I know that others like, they, I don't know, the Montessori school doesn't have like computers or whatever. Like it's more like farm to table schooling. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So isn't it farm interesting that the people that are the apex of technology and causing all these addictions don't actually, they know how harmful it is so they don't use it. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, that's what you're yeah, saying. They profit off it and push, push it on to people. i tell you one thing though, Elon Musk definitely suffers from jealousy and uh, other negative emotions. Like remember that time that he offered to help stranded Thai school kids in Thailand that were stranded in a cave. Yeah. And a guy said, Oh, Oh, actually we don't need your help and we don't need this particular idea right now. And then he called him a pedophile yeah i think it's so crazy for someone who's heavily invested in like terraforming mars to be a livable planet for the, the continual projection of the human species into the galaxy but also be like oh you don't want my thing you fucking pedophile yeah it's it's so weird that just something like that can affect his brain waves yeah to, to, like because you i see him as like you know someone you know, you see someone like that almost as like a, a Marvel superhero, supervillain, right? Doctor Strange type person has everything, can do but everything. He, it's not like Iron Man is like tweeting people, yeah, calling them pedophiles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's so strange. You know, like like it would make the movie not as good. <laughs> yeah, like if he's he like, does this incredible second, thing. Builds and builds this incredible thing, or saves saves and kills the bad guy and saves America. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, really? Yeah, you fucking lo you fat yeah. loser. Like to someone Sorry, on I Twitter. Just, I was just on Twitter calling a mechanic a pedophile because yeah. it made me insecure about my spacesuit. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever, Some, like. Yeah. And 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 also, I actually weird, would like, prefer that version of the movie where Iron Man yeah. saves the world. And then weirdly, there's this odd extra scene where he's like, oh, I found a troll on Twitter who messaged me on Twitter and said that I had a fucking looked really lame in my suit. So I called him a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a really weird scene where he's just like, I like, to I like the idea of that scene being at the very end. You know how people <laughs> will wait for the credits to finish on a Marvel right. for yeah, the next yeah. one. And it's just him. A bit that got cut. A, yeah calling a plumber a, a, a pedophile i think there's like something incredibly relevant. endearing about people that are a tremendous uh strength or uh, uh tremendous stature and and people we look up to for courage and 
and uh, inspiration and strength, but um, are also incredibly petty and human. Like it's like if 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 Superman, you know, flew under the under the building and caught the woman and placed her, and you're like, well, that's beautiful, and then you see him have diarrhea in Thailand because he went on a sex tour. Like he's hosing his asshole out with a hose. That's endearing. Yeah, and and oh, he's just human after all. Yeah, it's like I like the idea of Superman on a sex tour. (laughs) You like that idea? Or, Or like, or like yeah just like spider-man like someone criticizes his his cocktail and he just like calls him a fucking whack cunt (laughs) and like just loses it do you know what i mean like loses the like loses the equanimity that you you associate with those people he's calm he's cool he's got superpowers he's young he's fun he does all this work one day he's bouncing through the building saves all the people puts out the fire saves the cops kills the bad guy jails the bad guy sitting in a bar having a cocktail talking to a girl and just fucking like what i asked for a martini you can't even get a martini right this is fucking sour what the fuck and just like just loses it and calls him a fat piece of shit fucking loser you're a fucking <laughs> loser buddy like it makes the 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 bar really uncomfortable it's just an awkward moment it's too it's too much yeah like she's disgusted that he like can't control himself. Emotionally. Yeah, she leaves and yeah. And then he ends up just crying. Yeah. And like, yeah. That's the Spider-Man I want to see. I guess it's kind of cliche now, isn't it? Superheroes is, that are secretly flawed. There's been a few shows like that, I suppose. Yeah, there. I think there are. But like, I, like Batman's flaw is that he doesn't know if he's good or bad. Right. It's less like he. It's not like he shit the bed because he drank too much. yeah 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 like it's much more noble still than what you're talking about you're talking about i'm talking about stuff that other yeah i'm talking about superman has to get his cock checked yeah (laughs) you're talking about like more (laughs) superman might have herpes like yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah 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 that that's I think different to Batman going like, fuck, I just don't know who I am anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that you're saying that like, maybe it's not as endearing as if he had diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah. Cause fuck that makes it even cooler. If he's confused, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if Dr. Strange is like overcoming mental trauma, it makes him even cooler almost. Yeah. Right. Cause he's even more stoic and stuff. Yeah, right. But it's not like, hey, man, you're piss- you've been pissing yourself in public without knowing it. Yeah, you need to get your bladder. Someone's going to tell you. You need to get an ultrasound of your bladder to make sure that it's not enlarged. It's like, oh, yeah, they cool. Don't... <laughs> yeah, they don't have that endearing moment where they're humiliated. Yeah. Like, that. when has Batman been humiliated? Never. Hey, Batman, sometimes men get infections in their urinary tract as well, you know. Um, you might want to get that checked out. Since you've Sometimes been fucking cr- so many street hookers in the alley. <laughs> Sometimes cranberry juice isn't going to cut it. Yeah. When you've been- <laughs> yeah. But also I do enjoy your new gadget where you throw a bullshit, you know, fucking bat shaped ninja star and it turns into a rope. And you can climb. That's all good. That's cool. Yeah. You're cool. But get your dick checked. Get your dick all examined, Batman. <laughs> I know that you've got a lot of ongoing moral quandaries. Yeah, but this is but a no-brainer. Fun. Get your dick checked. But your prostate is enlarged, buddy, because your stream has been breaking up when you piss. <laughs> this is the doctor talking to him? Is this the doctor? Is this your idea of the scene where the doctor's talking to him about his prostate? I'm just saying there should be more scenes like that peppered throughout the Marvel So universe you think and... you would like Marvel better if you saw Batman have to take off his cloak and get a prostate exam because he's turning 45? Yeah, I think that... <laughs> I think, well, like, that that could appeal to, the, you know, those art house people that don't like the Marvel Universe movies. They right, might like it. Right, They might like seeing a, a you know, a um senior... Well, it might be nice to do a more gritty version. Like they think that 
you know, that Batman's gritty because he fucking, they have him growing up as a kid being scared of bats. Oh, the three dimensional character. Having yeah. living under a bridge is a heroin addict. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like having living in a pile of garbage and, and he, he yeah. fucking eats bats. Like he's catching them and eating them because he can't survive. <laughs> And he's got, he's living with a street pro, a street sex worker. Excuse me. So you're talking about a Batman who eats bats. He's actually not afraid of them. He loves them and eats them <laughs> and kills them. He actually considers them filthy, disgusting animals that he's happy to kill. And so he dresses up at them. He dresses up, at, dresses up as a bat almost <laughs> ironically. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a bat. Ooh. But really always what just he needs got- to do is rob the liquor store to keep his, you know, alcoholic habit going under the bridge where he's living with a street sex worker. I like the idea that he's always Who got a he fever loves. as well. Yeah. Can't stress that one enough. So, so he's got, he's just always feverish as well? Yeah. Because he's like starting new viruses. <laughs> <laughs> like Batman's an like- incubator. Yeah, yeah. He's an incubator but for the next corona. He's eaten those CBD bats. Yeah, the ones that living in the fucking yeah, they're in they're in a tree that's like next to Ernest and Young accounting complex. <laughs> they're the ones I get bitten by. Yeah, like well, from, you told me one time that you were, you were paranoid that a, one of the city bats was going to shit on a wound that you had on your head, like like that one would fly over and coincidentally shit into an open wound you had, and that you'd get I, a disease I that no one had heard yeah. of. I did. I, that was before coronavirus. I got a wound on my head and was worried about like i want i wear, w- wanted to wear a hat to prevent a bat from shitting into the wound what made you think a bat was going to shit into your wound because uh there was bats out that there night. were just bats around in general yeah and i had a wound in my head and how'd you um, get the wound i ran into a tree branch <laughs> <laughs> sorry i know that's not funny but no 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 it, does it was sound. crazy. How did you run into a tree branch? What were Just you doing? Ran into it. Ran into it directly, like proper. So like, you weren't like bridges. running or playing football or something. You just was walking along and just ran straight into a tree branch. Yeah, I was. I was just um running. Yeah, um, ran into a tree branch, cut my head open. Right. And then just kept running as well. Like because I wanted to get the twenty minutes done. What 20 minutes? Like the 20 minute timer on the thing for the run. Oh, so you were timing yourself and you wanted to complete the run before you went and sought medical help. Well, I never sought medical help. But you wore a because... cap in case a bird or a bat shit it in your head. Yeah, and yeah, 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 disease. yeah. Yeah, when I, when I um, was able to get home, I put a hat on. Do you reckon you could ever eat anything from a wet market? Like the ones where this bat supposedly came from that caused the coronavirus? Could I eat something yeah. from the wet market? Yeah. If it was given if it was given the right farm to table narrative, yeah. You if, would if you a... I do not believe that you would risk eating something from a wet market. I just don't believe Oh, it. do you mean you mean now, not before? Oh, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, I before, mean, why do you maybe. think they're better now? Well, markets? no, no. I just, mean, I just mean before COVID. I, I, I think like. Oh, so you think COVID's made you more paranoid? Well, there was like Anthony Bourdain Which makes sense. episodes, right. where you know he'd, he'd eat like a, an infected eel. What? You know, and or he'd just eat like the weirdest shit that he could find in a wet market. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because he's yeah. such a. Um, I guess for a chef, that a wet market is like. A boutique level like it's, it's the next... like being like it if you're a sex addict it's like the bar yeah. getting higher like for us eating at regular restaurants to him that's like missionary but going yeah, to a yeah. wet market and finding a box of bat of, of eels that he you know doesn't know where they came from is sort of like putting your dick in a glory hole exactly surprising and different and you're not sure he, his mouth was just an insatiable tourist yeah, and, and like I guess his palate was just adapted to everything. That's why he would always want to eat the weirdest. Like, like chefs and stuff don't seem to like eating steak and stuff like like normal. Like they want to eat the weird meat of the animal. Yeah, you think like that a they're... chef wants to eat a lamb's brain or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you think his palate got to a point where that's why he got so depressed? Was that he was like, oh, I last night I ate a fucking 
a uh, pelican's beak that was shoved with fucking mandarin skin and sprinkled with um, yeah. kumquats and fucking alligator cum. Yeah. And now I've just tasted it all. I'm out. Peace. I think that's what happened because I think he had a buffet of endangered species. Right. Like he went to just a buffet of like weird fucking... things that it's illegal to yeah. have. Yeah. And then was like, oh, I've reached the apex of my culinary adventure on this planet. There's Do you no know what more. I mean? It's like, it's like when that guy went to the moon, Buzz Aldrin. Oh yeah. You know what happened to him? He just became like an alcoholic when he got back because like Did he'd he? just go to like, he'd just go to Woolworths and be like, "Fuck this shit." Buzz well, Aldrin went have... to Woolworths. Well, Probably. just when he when he got or got back to Earth or whatever. He's still yeah, alive. right. But like uh, you're yeah, just saying, he... is that true that he was an alcoholic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he went he to, the moon. to the moon. Yeah. That would haunt you, wouldn't it? You'd just be like, fuck, I'm going to have a Nothing smoothie more. now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's two types of happiness as well. Like to use a water-based analogy, I think there's like quarries and leaking buckets. Right. And a, qu- a quarry is like a reservoir of happiness. And that's like when you go to Woolworths and there's like a 50-year-old shelf stacker that's still smiling and saying hello to people and greeting, greeting them genuinely. Okay. Interesting. Because he's got such a reservoir of happiness, he can siphon it off doing something he doesn't like to do and still be happy. Right. So he's so happy that he can work at Woolworths and still smile. For 40 years, yeah. For just, 40 years. But he's just still like, hey, how's it going? Like still has right. enough happiness that he could squander it. He could doing squander something. it on strangers at Woolworths who are looking for a barbecue chook. Totally. And, and then what's the, the other one? Leaking, the leaking bucket is your Anthony Bourdain... It's like they have to do their dream job just to not even kill themselves. Wow. Like, because like they, they need, need so to... much stimulation, so much happiness, so much accomplishment, so much st- stimulation and enjoyment in their lives constantly that to even just keep going. Because it's leaking out as it's it comes out. in. Yeah. So he eats like a pelican beak that's like illegal. Yeah. And he's like, okay, fuck, that'll last 10 minutes. Now it's out. Now I need to fucking bungee jump off a cliff. Right. That's why, like, base jumpers are always, like, the most depressed people. They right. don't even care if they die. Right, because they're just fucking flowing through the air freely like a bird down between two cliffs. It's like, if I can't match this, I may as well just pfft, kind of thing. Like, because the bar yeah, all is so the, high. Yeah, all adrenaline junkies are leaking buckets. I guess it's what was what, head, hedonic adaptation, the idea that everything that you try, you adapt to, everything you get. And it's why we talked about in a previous episode. It's why uh, Russian oligarchs end up with a militarized yacht shooting pirates in the Horn of Africa, shooting Somali pirates around the Horn of Africa because they're so bored that they want to blast Somali pirates with, with advanced weaponry because they're Russian oligarchs and they've already drunk champagne out of a human skull. So they've yeah, just got nothing just, like they're masturbating over drone strikes kind of thing. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs and they're just on the top of the pyramid of needs and they're just right. going, fuck, I'm just going to blast a pirate with a rocket launcher. Right. That'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be fun for a little while kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm a leaking bucket of nothingness. I'm an empty vessel that's right. broken. And the I need to have the, the guy at Woolworths, to like the him and the guy at Woolworths could barely have a conversation a Russian oligarch who's tried everything in life, experienced every sexual pleasure, every drug pleasure, traveled everywhere, has every materialistic possession and unlimited money, couldn't have a conversation with the guy at Woolworths who just is, who's, who's looking after the barbecue chooks with an apron, smiling. And legitimately happy. Yeah, but the Russian for, oligarch's for, like, oh, can I shove this chicken up my ass or... You know, can we stuff it with cocaine and then eat it with the cocaine and then yeah. have a prostitute piss on our face? He'd be like, oh, my, I live with my wife and kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't, you mate. Can't do, that. can't do that. If I have, if I have chicken food with coke, it, uh, I, I wouldn't sleep. I've got to get up get work up. tomorrow. I just love this. The to and fro, the banter with the customers. This is what I, my dream job is. Literally just two different, yeah, two different types of vessels. <laughs> Very true. 
<laughs> the opposites. Very true. You want to be a quarry because their basking window is so big. Right. Like if that guy has a win, he's like, fuck, mate, do you hear what happened? Like three I won years 50 ago. Bucks. I, yeah. Yeah. Three years ago, I won 50 bucks. Like he's still as happy about it. Yeah. I won a raffle. Yeah. Myself a meat tray. Yeah. He has an, an apparatus to enjoy things for a long time after they've happened. Mm. Do you think that you, where do you put yourself in the, are you a quarry or a leaking bucket? Definitely not a quarry. No. Um, do you think stand up is like your leaking bucket where you need this constant high intensity stimulation? Yeah. I think the, the basking window is forever shortening, becoming smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's hedonic adaptation or just, yeah, I think it is maybe, but also you get punished for enjoying a celebration. Do you know what I mean? Like anytime you pop the champagne, things tend to unravel, I find. So you, you feel like a bit of, you feel a bit of concern after anything great happens because you feel like something negative is around the corner. Yeah, yeah. So there's just no time to reflect on it. And it's not like many great things happen anyway, but you're like at least <laughs> trying to um, have as much external stimulus as possible because you can't ever enjoy something that happened a few days ago. Right. Like you can't dine out on it. You can't dine out on it emotionally. You can't go three days ago. I, I, I bungee that jumped goes, off her. That, that goes for everyone, right? Like if something Some people, great happens to you, it does pass with time and then becomes a memory. Yeah. But some people can enjoy something that happened four days ago still. You think Have some you met people, anyone like that? Some people are just more contented. Yeah. They're like four days ago, I got this and I'm yeah. still stoked. I think those people exist. I honestly don't know any of them, but I have a feeling they exist. I don't know. I don't know many people at the moment, so. You're a bit isolated at the moment, are you? Yeah, when, when I'm broke, I self-isolate because I feel like every social encounter costs like a hundred bucks. Does, doesn't it? Going out for drinks, eating. Yeah, I'm living off like 20 bucks a day, so it's hard to bring someone else in on that. <laughs> what about your girlfriend? Let's go for a walk and have a glass of water. <laughs> like you're just thinking of like really free yeah. things to do. I know what you mean. The other night I went on a date and uh, we just sat near a river. Yeah. So it, we were able to avoid having to buy any drinks and stuff. <laughs> Why don't we just go That's meet near the river? She's like, oh, yeah. okay. That's what happens when you don't drink alcohol as well. I mean... I guess the, the 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 real thing to do on a date is to dumpster dive because then you're yeah. not only sp not spending money, but you're actually gaining money in a way because you're, you go, Hey, good to meet you. I'm Damien. Um, would you, where are we going to go? Oh, we're going to go to this place near Woolworths. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. In Paddington. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's good. It's nice and cold today too. So it should be a good restaurant. Oh, it's weird. What does the temperature have to do with it? You'll see. This is, and then you arrive yeah. at the dumpster and she's like, where's the restaurant? Oh no, I'm going to go into this dumpster and get out some fresh salami. <laughs> like I mean, there'll be salami, to... meat, vegetables that no one's touched and they've just thrown them away. Capitalism is a waste. It's such a shame. We throw all this away. Why don't we just go dig around in this fucking bin and I'll yeah. dig you up. I'll make you a meal right now out of this fucking bin. How romantic is that? I dump, jump into a bin, pull out some lettuce, some chicken, some fucking bacon and uh, make up a fucking, you know, a really good Caesar salad here and take your hat off and use that as a bowl. See, it's a fine line between romance and someone who's, um, who's, a, who's, a, who's, a, who's a, <laughs> potentially a schizophrenic or like is, is laying a pathway of rose petals is very close to, you know, oh, they're not rose petals, they're thorn bushes. It's a, you follow the thorn, follow the branches of a lantana bush. Yeah. That's not, that's not cool. That's weird. But rose petals are okay. Oh, yeah. yeah I left a chocolate on your pillow. 
Oh, I left um a uh, a um a uh, it's it's a small thing of yo- yogurt. <laughs> I left a stone fruit under your mattress. Like, why is that different? I left like a barbecue those... chook on your pillow, eh? Is that a threat or dinner? I don't know. I left Nando's on your pillow. Oh, thanks. Suddenly that's, it's like, oh, really? You're not grateful? The most expensive takeout, you fucking bitch. Fucking most expensive like, chicken in town. I mean, that's what you've described there as culture. <laughs> like we're culturally ingrained not to think putting Nando's on someone's pillow isn't like the best Valentine's Day gift ever. <laughs> <laughs> like All right. That's... What's the difference? Like you tell me this fucking tell me this, right? How the fuck do you think champagne was invented? French, French people fucking, they would get stuck in a castle. I don't mean like, yeah. oh, we're stuck. Where's the key? I mean, like the, the English would surround them and um, try and starve them to death. And wine and cheese and frogs and fucking rats and all that shit became fair game to eat. Wine would go off. It'd start fermenting. It'd start bubbling. Bang, champagne. Yeah. Cheese would yeah. go moldy. Boom, that weird moldy shit. Frogs, protein, yum. Eat the legs. Frogs. Now what is it? Back in the day when you were starving to death because the palms are fucking surrounded your castle and you're like a rich fucker, you're like, fuck it, I'll eat a frog. Everyone would have gone, oh, my God, look, King Harry's eating a frog. The French, oh, my God, it's so disgusting. Don't come near right. me with that mouth after you've eaten that frog. Now, what's the most romantic shit you can do? Fucking cook a frog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have fro- fr- escargot, snails. Yeah. Lick its oh, baby, back and then cook its legs. We're going to such a nice place. We're going to eat fucking snails and frogs and shit that people used to have to eat because they were because of the palms. We're starving them to death. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's. Uh... What's the difference between me leaving a big bowl of custard under the house and being locked <laughs> in there for four weeks? Right, I'm locked in there for four weeks. I'm starving. The custard goes moldy and weird. It turns crystallized, and I break it off and eat it and go. Oh, it's actually not bad. What is the difference? Well, that there is no difference because that's what I said about the wet market too. That ties in well with that because that's what I was saying. If I was given the right farm to table narrative, like your custard dungeon thing. (laughs) Baby, come down to my custard dungeon. I've been leaving this custard sitting here for four weeks. It's going to be so romantic. It's going to be so romantic in about 50 years. (laughs) Hey, because baby, in 50 years, like custard. molded custard will be the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, how yeah, many, yeah, how be... many centuries did it take for champagne to be good? Was there a middle ground where it's like, oh yeah, you know what? Drinking the bubbly shit isn't bad. Then before it became the most expensive wine on the planet. Also, I think it's like, yeah, it's just the ultimate form of meal prep as well. Is is leaving custard in a dungeon yeah. for, 40, for, for yeah. weeks. And that's why I would eat like a snake's ass if it was given the right <laughs> the right story behind it. If the guy's like, what we did is we fermented its ass in like a custard or whatever, you know, like there's like yeah. a weird this chef's a, table. This is a dark like chef's asshole. table style. Yeah, this Man, is if a they did a chef, Yeah. If they did a chef's table on ducks assholes, you'd have a fucking queue from here to Tumbuck too. Yeah. For that Michelin star. Do you know, like if a Michelin star chef was just like, I'm doing duck's asses and I prepare them, I ferment their fucking rectums <laughs> and dri- I drizzle them in balsamic. And like, do you know what I mean? He did that yeah. whole weird, like I use a flambe torch to like. Yeah. Crisp, crisp the uh, crisp rectum, it. duck's rectum. Yeah. That's what exactly. That's it, man. It's all about the story. There'd be right? a queue for that restaurant. If I came to you tomorrow and said, I've got some ducks rectums, let's eat. You'd be like, whoa, (laughs) fuck that, man. But if some Madagascan fucking tribe or some fucking South African crazy chef that's like a genius goes, duck rectums where it's at, it's being cured. Duck rectum was an ancient food of the fucking blah, blah people. And now it's coming back. Duck rectums, duck rectums. Get your duck rectums. Come here, get your duck rectums, everybody. You'd be like, fuck yeah, duck rectums. 
But Next if minute, I I'd be in a restaurant. The duck room. eating its asshole. Yeah, I'm a lunatic. That's culture. That's all culture is. It's a series of mentally ill people, and uh, somehow some of the stuff s- sticks. It's mentally ill people with consensus. With a consensus. Like if you've got a bunch of schizophrenics eating duck rectums, there's a consensus. Now it's being served <laughs> at Nando's. Nando's would be serving it. They'd be serving like it get like a duck's that. Ass. They'd be yeah, serving I it think like so. That. I I honestly think there would be a queue for that restaurant. You'd have to call up and be like, "Man, I can't get into the duck's rectum place." Yeah. yeah. But I just really would love a table. I want to go al fresco and eat duck rectum. Yeah, that, that, that you'd have to ma- yeah, you'd have to make a reservation. Don't you just... think everyone would eat it? It's not like people like to think that they'd be the one person going, "Oh, you guys are fucking weird." Dude, but you wouldn't be. Snails, mate. Where do you, do you know where you buy snails? You don't get them at Coles. They're one of the most revered like fucking expensive boutique you can't even get them that's how boutique it is well this poor bastard probably one of the most romantic things you could do is cook a woman some snails yeah baby i went and got snails like escargot like the french do it oh my god so much thought wow i've never tried it this is exciting and different yeah sweetheart i've got the foot of an ibis (laughs) And you yeah. I've fried it in oil and it's crispy. Ibis feet. No, no. Where did you get them? That's disgusting. You shouldn't kill oh. ibises. That's weird. What's wrong with you? Ibis feet's probably diseased. Oh, yeah. You'll eat a fucking frog's leg. You fucking hypocrite. You took a, someone from a parallel dimension and showed them an ibis. They would think it was like a flamingo or some like beautiful bird of prey or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, Ibises almost look very elegant. Oh, it's yeah. It's just that it's just that we've conditioned that you know they're conditioned to eat bin, bin shit. That that we see them as dirty. They are like you say, it's like watching a man in a in a good tuxedo jumping into a dumpster, and yeah. then ravaging himself. You know, yeah, yeah. going and eating like rubbing the food all over himself. You're like, God damn, that guy in that fucking five thousand dollar suit losing the plot. That's what it's like watching ibises in the city. These beautiful wetland birds. They come in here. And by and, the way, you can see a guy in a tuxedo dumpster diving at at your show. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can see that. Like, you can see a guy, like at, at like at a nighttime alleyway. Like a guy that was at a, a at a place now is in a ditch, going through rubbish. You know what I mean? You know how you see those people after they're clubbing. Yeah, I, I don't know if what you're talking about is so universal. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, when you see a guy that, in a dinner suit, you know, covered was, in his own shit. No, you yeah, mean I, like I, when I, you see someone who's been out clubbing and they're just being debaucherous in an alleyway, vomiting yeah, and yeah, fucking yeah. in the bins. That's and like shit. an ibis. Yeah, I agree. But there was a guy to what you said. Uh, I don't know if he, he was in the Korea Mail. He um, ate a because only they would cover this story. Mm. But yeah, he he ate like a snail and or a slug and became like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> you know about that guy? Now wait, let me just digest this. No pun intended. So he. <laughs> So when you say he became like Stephen Hawking, you mean he got a moto neuron disease or you mean he became incredibly intelligent? That's a great distinction to make. He did not become incredibly intelligent. <laughs> um, I didn't think so. So it was, it was mostly the, the wheelchair bit. Yeah, just, just the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't start understanding how particles behave at the edge of a black hole. I think that's what he thought was going to happen. I think this guy had watched too many Marvel movies. Wow. Could he be more you know, wrong? The Spider-Man gets bitten by a spider, but we know when that happens in real life, it's a disaster. Right. But anyway, yeah, that, that story horrified me. And uh, I, it's, it was legitimately a tragedy. Um, so it horrified you in what way? I mean, obviously it's a tragedy for the guy, but he did eat a slug. 
So I think you're dancing it's, with danger a little bit to eat slugs. It's a tragedy because it's like these fucking animals are full of like how dirty was that goddamn slug or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you just think it's scary that nature is so dangerous in a way. Yeah. Like I would think, you know, someone's like, yeah, man, I had a slug. Oh, very funny. Let's move on. You know, you'd think it would be over with. You wouldn't think that it would lead to ruin your life forever. It just scares yeah. you how easy it is to become dangerously ill or incapacitated. In some That's what way. I was telling you about the tick thing. That yeah, that, that you thought you had Lyme disease. Yeah, when you got a tick and, in the CBD. Which yeah, it's like this shit's just out there. Right, these fucking creatures. Yeah, I guess a tick isn't as an exciting potential superhero. You know, like Spider Spider Man, Stephen Hawking in a wheelchair, but a genius. You you get Lyme disease and yeah, I don't think it's just you just get tired, don't you? Yeah, you get real tired. You get like not, a not the best malaise. superpower. He got bitten by a tick. Now he's tired, man. <laughs> just they tired. should have a guy called Tired chronic, Man and he's chronic fatigue, man. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah, tick bit me, and I guess I've been operating at seventy percent since. It's hard to really detect. People question it all the time. There's forums that I write on. Um, I'm it's not bad, a- but I'm just a little off. Yeah. I had, I had a guy in my uni group for my major project at the end of my degree in IT um, who had chronic fatigue, or so he said. Yeah. So he <laughs> said when he didn't turn up and shit for for group meetings and fucking doing any work. It's <laughs> yeah, like, I got yeah. chronic fatigue. Do you, man? Or is it just this is a group assignment and you're just not there? Chronic fatigue of the group assignment or chronic fatigue of your body, mate? Where's the, where's <laughs> the fatigue happening? Is it of the, the, the fatiguing of the assignment? That was a tough one because I had him who was chronic fatigue, yeah. man. And then I had my mate, Nikos, <laughs> who was a drug dealer who was dealing pot for yeah. the campus. And he would have his drugs stored in my printer. So I'd be in the middle of the assignment and someone would knock on the door and he'd open up the printer and sell them a bag of weed. So it was a very, it's just a tough group. That's all I'm saying. And he contributed nothing as well. um, Except in the final presentation of the project, he made Tajiki because he was Greek. Yeah. So he made made a dip. That's not contributing to a group assignment. Making Tajiki? Yeah. Tajiki? Tajiki. And... And weed causes chronic fatigue as well. Like when you're on it, you are. Well, that's funny because you're selling a lot to that guy. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I get chronic fatigue from time to time. <laughs> I bet you do. It's even, it's even called chronic as well. Yeah. Like Dr. Dre, like <laughs> got some of that chronic fatigue. fatigue yeah, Dr. Syndrome, Dre's a chronic. Yo, man, yeah, I got really. chronic fatigue. You know what I'm saying? Smoking too much chronic. Yeah. I get chronic fatigue. Weed should be called chronic fatigue because that's what happens when you smoke it. Yeah, true. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people with chronic fatigue in group assignments, I reckon. Yeah, it's funny like how it, they it, seem, it, to seem to get it around group assignments at uni for some reason well i think it's like lyme's disease is the same like i like it flares up intermittently so you'll have like five good days and then someone will like ask if you can help them move house and then it'll kick in again <laughs> Perfect. like it's like it's cyclical yeah. like it comes in bouts yeah there's a lot of diseases like that that i've always found around group effort things yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I remember one guy said, I'm pulling out of this play that we'd all been working on at acting school because I've got vertigo. I'm like, do yeah. you, mate? Do you have vertigo? I've never or heard that one it? before. Yeah. Fucking vertigo. Get real, mate. You bit we all get we all yeah. get a bit vertigo. Yeah, it's it's absolute there, there's a few ones you can use there. Yeah. So anyway, to wrap up, I guess we're saying Utopia is 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 uh, likely to have flaws, just like superheroes, 
And if you're going to go on a date or something, try and make some old fucking salami or some shit go moldy over a long time. And in the future, you'll be regarded as a culinary genius. And uh, if you've got a group assignment or someone wants you to move their couch, make sure you choose the right type of disease. You got limes, chronic, chronic fatigue. fatigue, vertigo. They're the, they're the three big ones. They're three big ones that you never really have to explain in detail what's going on. You can just do a no show and it's like, oh, no question. <laughs> yeah. So you're welcome for those pieces of advice. I don't think we've ever signed off from the podcast. But this time we're going to breaking ground. Thanks for listening to us. See you next time.